Hello and welcome once again to our series on stereo recording. Now all stereo techniques have one thing in common. They are attempting to capture the reality of what our human ears actually hear. ORTF does a pretty good job of this by positioning the mics in a way that replicates the positioning of our ears. But there's one thing missing, a big fleshy human head. You see, the reality of what we hear is affected by the presence of this big oval thing between our ears. Our head blocks high frequencies from the right side that are trying to reach our left ear. We also hear slight phase cancellations that occur because of the reflections off of our head and from within the folds of our outer ear. All of these factors aid us in our spatial perception. So it stands to reason that we could improve the quality of these recordings by putting some kind of barrier between the two microphones to substitute for our head. The question is, should it be a reflective barrier, absorptive, or some combination of the two? Well, people have been working on this for years, and one of the most comprehensive systems is made by our friends at Neumann, the KU100 binaural dummy head. This thing is fantastic. The mic capsules are actually placed where our eardrums would go. There's a realistic fleshy outer ear and everything. You know, I think I'd like to get my hands on one of these. Let's just go online and see how much it costs. Let's see, Neumann KU, okay, here it is, and holy sh balls, Batman. Okay, we're gonna try something else. All kidding aside, it is not necessary to have a dummy head in order to do a binaural recording. In fact, it doesn't even have to be head shaped. It just needs to be a reflective barrier. But for our purposes today, we're going to be enlisting the aid of Clarice here, who clearly has seen better days. We're gonna set up two pressure omni microphones right next to her head, right where the ears should go. Now to get the most benefit from this, you should be listening on headphones, not speakers. In fact, binaural recording doesn't really translate all that well on speakers. Okay, so now we're listening to the binaural pair. And if you're listening on headphones, the first thing you probably notice is how realistic it sounds. The sounds that I'm making here in my space might sound like they're actually happening there in your space. And what you may realize is that not only do you get a good sense of left and right, but also of front and back. Whee! Keys up and over, and up and over. Oh God! What other fun toys did I bring with to play around with binaural? Let's see, we got some shakers. That phone was in here, by the way. Made you look. Thirsty? I got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell. This actually isn't a cowbell, but that's all I could find. Haircut anyone? I don't know about any of you, but when I get a haircut, I just want them to not talk to me. Pasta? This pasta didn't turn out as squishy as I was hoping. Should've used spaghetti. Gross. Now in case you're wondering why her name is Clarice, it's because when I do demos like this, I like to get right up on the mic and go, well, hello, Clarice. <laughs> now, as I mentioned before, binaural sounds great on headphones, but it doesn't translate very well on speakers. So another approach is to use an absorptive barrier between the microphones rather than a reflective one. One such approach is Crown's SASSP system, and there are a lot of different designs and approaches out there, both homegrown and commercial, that get used for ASMR and different ambient soundscapes. But I want to look at one in particular that gets wonderful results the Jekyllin disc. Now a friend of mine in Omaha uses this on a regular basis for classical recordings, so that sounds like a perfect excuse for a road trip. 